guys, Misty here. Welcome back for another episode of Color Your World with Diamond Painting along with me. We can get this done hopefully today. Um, so you ease. My children have been sleeping funky hours and waking up and not so great of moods and we're all just waking up now and so you might hear or I might have to pause uh, due to some grumpiness um, my um, so my husband and I, we woke up to listen to the unemployment town hall meeting and we found out based on the information that he, that, that was said is that he is actually supposed to qualify for a regular unemployment benefit. And right now, because they have missing wages for him, it looks like he only made under a certain amount, which is kicking it over to the other system of, of the other benefits, and it's not correct. So we have to, um, when you, you, you go on the site, it says missing wages, you click on that, and then it tells you that you have to fill out this form and send it in by mail and so this is just another step that's taking a really long time and and a really annoying process which would be helpful if they did a interview to double check everybody's benefits then we wouldn't have to continually try to call I mean I tried to call, I think I called about 55 times today, and I can't get through, and it's a busy signal majority of the time, and the rest of it, you just can't, it, it just, tell it's just an annoying recording that lasts forever just to tell you that you, they're hanging up on you to call back later, so that's very frustrating to have to sit and listen to make sure it's going to kick you out is very very annoying so I don't know like why the system is the way the system is because I feel like it's a bit ridiculous because it just it doesn't seem like an, an effective way to run things and if they're already short staff what are you getting into if they're already short staffed because they're limiting their staffing then it would make more sense for them to spend the time to call people to double check and make sure all of their stuff is good on their claim but what do I know that's not why I get paid the, the big bucks, apparently. I mean, I don't know. It just seems not efficient. Not a, a, not a non-efficient way of running things. Can't see with the reflection. So it just, it just doesn't seem very, very effective. And so... Then I asked my husband to ask the post office if there is any issues um, or you know delays that have been brought up about shipments from China and the staff there is like less than enthused about answering anybody's questions and they give you like a smart Alec, I'll say Alec, because I don't, I don't want to say the bad word, but response, and you know, it's like the package hasn't moved 
or done anything for three and a half weeks. You would think that it would have moved if it's going to move. So, but they just say, well, if it hasn't arrived, it hasn't arrived. Well, no kidding, okay? I get that if it hasn't arrived, it obviously hasn't arrived. I understand that. And I understand that there are there is a delay, and I understand the reasons for the delay. I just wanted to know if there was anything saying, like, hey, you know, we're grounding all flights for, um, you know, like, mail or blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, they, they don't even really want to answer your questions. So, it's a bit ridiculous, but, so that's, that's a little bit frustrating, um, to deal with, and, okay, so that's, that's, um, the end of 3770, so I'm just trying to do the smaller ones first, and then I will do the ones that have a higher quantity, um, so I know that these ones don't have very many up there, so... I'm doing these ones. So this one is um, 37.78 and it is um, the letter K symbol. So, I mean, I just, I had packages sent at different times and they are all caught up in the same spot. So I don't understand that, but it's just, it just gets a little frustrating. And then, and I also have um, my lazy arm thing coming today for my phone and it says it has arrived at the post office and so I was like since you're at the post office getting the mail um, can you ask them if you can pick up the lazy arm because it says it has arrived at you know the, the post office and he said that they gave him a smart aleck answer, basically saying, like, if it's not in your box yet, then it won't be until tomorrow, or blah, blah, blah. But it says, it says it's going to be delivered today by 8 p.m. And our, in our mail also says that you can pick it up by 1030. So, it's very frustrating when it tells you that you can pick something up by a certain time, and then, um they don't deliver it. They have until 8 p.m. to deliver it to the, to the um, outer mailboxes. And so that gets pretty frustrating too. And so I'm like, if it's in the building, I don't understand why I can't just say, hey, I'm looking for this package number and I'm here to pick it up. I'm already here, you know, like whatnot but because they always deliver my packages like late so if I I know if it's coming in that day then I'm probably not gonna get it until after four and so that gets pretty frustrating you know I pay I pay to have a PO box and and whatnot and then you know they they take forever to to release the mail. It just doesn't seem effective. But, you know, I get it. And I understand there are delays. And I'm not complaining about that. I just, on a regular day-to-day, -day, I don't understand if a package has arrived in the building of the post office, why I can't just grab it or... You know, like, why do I have to wait until it it is just burst into the outer boxes to get the package? It just, it doesn't seem like that should be, but, you know, well, maybe there is a good reason for it, and I'm just not logically thinking about what that is. Alright, 3844 is like a red hourglass like on the belly of a black widow Woo! I love this color too this color blue is so awesome I love it it's like a like a 
chlorine blue or like a cobalt blue and that's my favorite shade of blue all right there's only a few colors left that are not the background blue so let me just I want to get this this finished because I am super excited to start my dreamer designs that I just like I can't I can't even compose myself I keep telling my husband Let, I want to hurry up and finish this hey don't bump my table mister 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 don't bump my table what are you doing So, I also emailed our apartment, and I still haven't heard back from the apartment yet to get the information about next week. Is it next week? Whenever it is. <laughs> I hope it's next week. That's how, how much I want to get out of this place. Um, they knock on our door here like every few hours to ask us if we have any symptoms. Um, yeah, we're just waiting to hear back from the apartment uh, for confirmation. And so I basically asked, what do we need to do um, to get this going? Because I want to make sure there's no delays um, in this. And so um, they... They come in and they knock on our door, like I said, every every couple hours to ask us. And, and like, we have to... What the... <laughs> we have to tell them where we're going, when we're going, and, like, what we're doing. And so... I laugh and tell my husband I feel like we're in prison sometimes because... You know, like, have to ask permission to go anywhere. And um, we have a curfew, which, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not a bad idea for certain, for certain people, I think. Um, may, maybe they need to establish that curfew thing. But I'm sorry. I don't want to be out all night long uh, if I don't have to be. <laughs> and... So, um, but it gets, it gets like, um, when, when like a holiday comes up, like, um, we didn't do anything for Easter because of the whole thing. Um, uh, but like Christmas, my, my sister wanted us to come over and, you know, you get wrapped up in eating and presents and, you know, you do your, you're doing your thing. And you have to leave fairly early because it takes a little while to get back over to the other side of town. Whereas, you know, I might have stayed a little bit longer, but because we have that curfew, we've got to make sure we get back in enough time. We have everything we need by the time we get back because, you know, if you don't have that stuff, then you can't get that stuff until after they have a curfew from 10 to 6 a.m. You can't go anywhere unless unless it's work. And you have to prove that you're working. So, um, yeah, it's, it gets a little frustrating. But, like I said, I do understand for some people that they might need those kind of things. But I still see people walking past our window at night and it really is annoying because I you know like I said before and in one of my past videos that maybe you call me paranoid but I just I don't like seeing people walk past my room door and especially after um you know like you've watched them walk back and forth probably five times and like it's curfew time what are you guys doing out there and I, I'm not about to go look and find out, but I'm just like, why do they keep having to walk past my window? There's a staircase on both sides, and I feel like either way, they don't need to walk past my door. 
because there's a, a room next to us and it has a staircase in front of it. And then to the other side of us, there is a staircase, but a staircase also, but. Um, the drills don't really have much trash in it. They, every now and then I see a little bit of a, a speck in there. Um, like it's a piece of the, a drill or something, but I don't see any damage to much of the drills. Most of what I'm getting out of for the trash, most of what I'm getting for trash is just the excess amount that the stowaways I like to hide in. Um, so, uh, for the most part, that's just what it is. And I could easily put them in the correct bags, but, um, uh, well, I may be able to easily put them in the correct bags. It depends. I just don't want to, um... I just don't really want to have to deal with, um, 38, 45. I just don't really want to deal with it, so. Let's do something different today. I have a guest star. And it is my husband. Andrew, Andrew, what do you like about diamond painting? <laughs> I love all the different images that you get that you can have i love that you can take an image of anything even something that is your own photo it was a custom i love that it's a community of itself and i love that it's like a version of like a mosaic almost like all these little tiny uh drills come together to make a big picture. From far away, it looks like, wow, that's an amazing picture. And then you get up really close and you see all that it's made up of all these little diamonds. Or drills. And cool. how many diamond paintings have you done? <laughs> Not nearly as many as you. <laughs> um, no, I, you were kind enough to let me do Ariel, because she's my favorite Disney princess. So I did a diamond painting of Ariel. And then... Since we had the Disney princesses in order, chronological order, from left to right, and we were just kind of randomly doing them as a, I think a tray was picking them. Um, uh, it could have been a tree or it could have been de decision roulette. Right. Yeah, well, roulette. anyhow, I know that Ariel is far past, say, the earlier princesses like Snow White and Cinderella. So when it came down to, oh, do you want to do another diamond painting? Then I thought, well, I'm going to start from the beginning then, so I'm going to do Snow White. So that was another one that I did. And then, of course, we had the um, wolf one that we did together, which I actually really enjoyed because we did that wolf puzzle. Did it together. You want to tell them how many of those diamonds you actually put on there? Not nearly as many as you. <laughs> Same answer as before. Uh, but do you know roughly how many diamonds you placed on said wolf? I don't remember. Like, diamond I, I'd be lucky if it was like a quarter as many as you did. That's another thing I think is really. I want to say though. that you probably did about 300 mm -hmm. one day and maybe like 200 on another yeah, day. Yeah, so like 500 total. That is about all you did. Yeah, yeah. I completed all of the rest of it. Mm hmm. <laughs> Uh, so, since I completed majority, I completed it, right? Yeah, I, I, like you, like you said, like I, I, I took a while to complete these diamond paintings and you say, no, you started it, you gotta finish it because I yeah, don't want you saying that. Now I know the that. rule. The rule is, you change the rules, that's why. Because you're afraid I'm gonna say that you didn't do it, but uh -huh. I'm like, you did a majority of it, you can take credit for it. No, because you usually tell me I can't take credit for it. Yeah. Don't lie now. You can't right. be lying now that we have an audience. I'm, you got me on the hot seat. I'm in the spotlight now, so. Uh, I think this is probably the first time they've actually heard my real voice. Well, I will change your voice. I'm, in I'm this like, one am too, I, too, every I mean, response I have is it going to be a. I will give you a fake voice if you keep it up. Um, so, do you have a favorite diamond painting that I have either completed or I have purchased? I do. 
Um, my favorite custom diamond painting of, of, in color, I'm going to say. In color? Well, because you did the one of your... <laughs> my favorite custom painting is your grandparents. Just because I love the look that they have. They, they, they just look so much in love, you know? And the way he had... Uh, the, that they are positioned in that in that picture is just it it conveys such a um a connection and i never knew them together i mean i i met your grandfather and stuff but i know that you said that she was real pistol and stuff like that and you know she <laughs> That's funny probably <laughs> you know argumentative and stuff but just, they had they had a real close connection i wouldn't and that, say and that, much argument more like bantering bantering like, okay yeah more like she ruled the roost and she, if she, you got her mad enough, then yeah, she, yeah. she would tell you, that you would know she was mad, but for the most part, she didn't, she didn't yell at my grandfather that much, but, um, but, yeah, she was definitely a pistol. <laughs> the one, the one of your mother is also in black and white, which, I mean, it's definitely a second, but only just because of the fact that um, I think that she looks remarkably like um, your, what, say my, my niece, mm, no. your, your, my niece looks remarkably like <laughs> your grand, your mother, my mother, yeah, I was like, oh my God. I was like, is that Brittany? You're like, no, that's my mom. I'm like, oh, wow, okay. <sighs> so I, I really like that. But my favorite um, in color custom that you did is our, um, our family portrait. I mean, th that behemoth, you know, that gargantuan, large <laughs> painting that you did. It's, just, it, it's it's really nice. And it actually was probably the first example that you exposed me to as far as being able to have some creative um, approach to a diamond painting you don't have to be restricted to what the diamond painting is and by that I mean to say that in the picture our oldest son Jason has his pant leg kind of hiked up a little bit by you know by no fault of his own he just probably didn't notice it and he's basically like oh my god can you please fix that and so you were able to take the color of his pant leg and extend it to the rest of the way so that his skin colored drills would not show and it would look <laughs> as though his pant leg continued the rest of the way and you made it look like that was the way it was supposed to be which was very impressive to me so did you have any idea that you would continue on with this hobby of yours as long as you have because I know initially you were like I would never do something like that and it wasn't something you knew whether or not you were going to do so you got your initial diamond painting just to try it out and see if it was something you were going to like um well so I am a little on the artistic side so it is not surprising for me to like a hobby that is based around art um when I was in high school I used to um, I took I took beginners art and I took advanced art as well so I definitely liked doing art projects creative projects and the reason I only bought the one diamond painting is because I wanted to double check to make sure that I would continue to do the the projects because when you open your package up for the first time it is very intimidating to look at how many of these little tiny drills go on to one project so once I tried it and I liked it, I knew there was no going back. <laughs> I knew as soon as I got the diamond painting in the wolf that it was over for me. I was now officially addicted to 
a new art project. By the way, the, this color is uh, 3865 and it's in the equal sign. So once that happened, I, I knew for sure that I would continue on with them. Now, are there times when I get a little frustrated or a little burnt out? Yeah, a little bit. Um, are there times when I want to diamond paint and I don't always get to diamond paint? Definitely. <laughs> are there times that I say I'm going to I'm gonna do it and then I end up getting sidetracked with something else? Yes. But, you know, it, it doesn't take, you know, the faint of heart <laughs> of a person to complete 33 diamond paintings, you know, like, so I usually get really excited when I finish a diamond painting that I have to immediately pick the next one. Or I already have the next one picked out and I immediately have to kit it up and get it started. But the start of them is sometimes a little bit of a struggle for me because it's so far to the end. But we all know that if you don't continue to place drills then it'll never get done. So I always keep that in mind when I start to feel a little overwhelmed but like I said this this has definitely helped with anxiety issues as long as I'm not dealing um, fully and and a lot of that a lot of that probably comes from the fact that a lot of my diamond paintings came from a hooligan's drumageddon and so dealing with the drills popping up in itself is very very frustrating so every time I look at it I think this is supposed to be a stress reliever not causing more stress but I power through it because ultimately at the end of the day they're free and I didn't want to just you know toss them in the recycle so or in the garbage wherever they go um, so so, that was a long answer. <laughs> that was a good answer. Though. That was a long answer. This is the first diamond painting that I've noticed you do without actually kidding it up. That being said, <laughs> do you have a preference between kidding it up and doing it how you're doing now? Well, this way seems to be a little bit faster. Just because I can open it up and dump some in the tray and then, you know, set them aside. So that when I go to kit down, they'll just be in individual bags and they're already, they're already done. I don't have to open the containers, dump them out, take the labels off the containers. So it just depends upon how you, or what your preference is of how you want to work. Um... I just, you know, either way, because I've had multiple containers, so I have the Elizabeth Ward bead container, that's my late, that's my major one, and so I'm able to dump a portion of, of the drills in that, so that's helpful, um, but in theory, you don't really even need that stuff like I showed you guys in the 101 and like I'm showing you every every time I work on this painting that you don't actually have to have anything fancy. You don't have to have anything at all because at the end of the day, these bags are already labeled. So you just cut a little hole in them, dump some out and go on with your day. This one is thirty-seven fifty-five. Thirty-seven fifty-five. These are the peas. 
So P's and S's I think are pretty much what's supposed to be left and then there are ones that I definitely missed. So what is your least favorite thing about diamond painting? Not so much a thing about diamond painting itself, but the um, framing. I uh, love that the diamond paintings have these great images, but a lot of times you have to get them in a size that it's not easy to find a frame for. So I remember you just not too long ago talking about stretch canvases. Which is stretcher bars. Stretch, stretcher bars. Thank you. And that wasn't something I had really experienced before. So I thought when we were trying to find um, a frame for the family photo before and trying to be thrifty about it and going to a thrift store and having like this ugly green like plastic painted <laughs> coated painting on there and we're having to like chip in it all off. fairness you were supposed to restore it and fix it and you know but no yeah, I, well, it's too hard i don't want to do it I, just... I thought you would say the the price of them so i'm a little surprised well you're really good at finding the deals but... they probably can't hear you in there the diamond paintings can get quite pricey, but you are very good at finding those deals where they um, come in like a package deal where you'll get like 12 of them or something like that. Or from you Amazon. Just, yeah, from Amazon. Mm. So, or you've been fortunate or unfortunate, however you want to look at it, where you got 36 I think it was 36 diamond paintings for free because of all those popping drills. Um, yeah. But yeah, or, or you'll get like, you know, a diamond painting where the shipping was one penny. <laughs> so, you, you know, you have a way of... of that actually was a um, thing on AliExpress that you actually entered. <laughs> Little do you know. Um, but... I, you just opened your account, and I went in and I um, selected to win one of the freebies. Hopefully, it's not from Huacan. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't say Huacan, so I'm hoping it's not from Huacan. <clears throat> but he had his account one day, and they and they gave him a freebie. I was like, really? I've been applying for these freebies in my account for a long time and I never get I never get chosen so that was pretty cool um, the painting is actually stuck with the rest of the paintings so I plan on doing a re uh, unboxing of that the diamond painting that cost a penny <laughs> Uh, whenever it gets here. Um, which I think will be interesting. I wonder about the diamond pin that you're using, just because you've used different ones. Have you had preferences? Is there a certain thing you're looking for when you... Because um, I have what? Yeah, you've, you've used, used other one. ones. Okay, used other ones. Okay. So within the time that you've been diamond painting, um, has there been a preference that you've had or uh, something you had in mind when you were um, acquiring different diamond painting pens? Well, with the diamond painting pens, I have tried a few of them. I have a hard time gripping the, even with the grippies, I have a hard time gripping the, um, 
the starter pens because they they are really thin and after a while you like my my hand starts to hurt from it even my hand I, I probably like have stages of arthritis in my hands but I also um, tried another pen and I actually I actually made my own pen out of a out of a pen that I bought off of wish because I'm an 80s kid and I loved Care Bears Rainbow Bright haha <laughs> hence the rainbows everything rainbow bright okay when I was a kid everything was rainbow bright <laughs> I um, loved Rainbow Bright, I loved the Care Bears, and so I, I found a pen on Wish that was a Care Bear, and I used that pen until the, whatever the material was, I used it until it cracked, and when once it cracked, I can no longer push push anything down with the pen anymore, so... I had to get rid of that one, but I did, um, like peel the Care Bear off of it. <laughs> so I did keep the Care Bear, but, um, then I decided that I would look for another, another pen and I just made a regular ballpoint pen this time. Nothing super fancy, just found a pen and I... And I made it, and then it it didn't it didn't like feel as nice. So then I saw on Amazon I saw this rainbow rainbow pen that was like swirled or whatever, and I was like, oh, it's rainbow, it's cute. Well, when I got it, I hated it. <laughs> It had like a removable tip. It wasn't like this, but it was like another removable tip. And I lost the tip like all the time. It would fall off or my son would pull it off. And then I would have to search all over for the tiny little tip. And, and so in order to replace the tip on it, because I'm, I'm hard on my pens. You know, if I drop it on the floor, it bends the metal or whatever, but if I had any issues with the metal, I had to take this little metal tip part out and then put in and then put it into the pen because I didn't have another one of the the head things that that holds it. So I I decided that was the pen I used before this one and I have been seeing the hand turned pens for a while, but the hand turned pens are very expensive. They are between 20 and 30, 20 and 40, something like that dollars. And you know you don't want to you know you don't want me to spend $30 on a pen, so otherwise I would already have a rainbow oil slick pen from I don't remember which one actually has the one that's called oil slick. Um so I'm not going to say the name. Because I don't remember which which hand turned pen place it is, so but I can find out if anybody is is interested in a oil slick red uh, oil slick rainbow pen. I could probably easily figure that out since I'm part of the groups for pen turning, but um it it's just it, that's I mean. It's hard to say, well, let me get this $30 pen when I'd much rather get $30 worth of diamond painting. Diamond painting used to do. Um, so it makes it really hard for me. So um, when I found out that Diamond Art Club was selling these pens for less than 20 I got really excited because then it's a little more feasible to talk you into doing it. <laughs> so 
Um, there was a bit of a discount on it. I think I think I ended up spending fifteen with shipping and everything, or maybe it was twelve. I can't remember, but um, this I actually bought this pen from Diamond Art Club before I even bought a diamond painting from Diamond Art Club. So, uh, and that's not because I don't like Diamond Art Club. Don't get me wrong. I, I love, 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 love Mandy Manzano, but I have talked about this before, and that is I wish that they had more options when it comes to uh, squares versus rounds because if I could I would order them in squares and like all the ones that I love in squares but they just they don't they don't have that um, and and they've explained it and it's in and I and it's understanding and I understand they actually have someone hand chart their stuff so it would be a lot of a lot of work to ask them to go in and hand chart the image twice so that it fits both square and round because they would have to do different things to make a square look good versus a round look good so I and I and I totally understand that and so I don't fault you know fault it them for that so it's just that I I have my uh, and sometimes they don't have they don't have size options too so that also kind of you know like I'm gonna have limited limited wall space for certain diamond paintings so it makes it a little bit harder because I love the Mandy Manzanos don't get me wrong but I want to say I think that they're like 50 by 150s or something along those lines I have to double check I will edit the video if it's if it's not bad but um, with with some text and tell you the exact size but I want to say that it's 50 by 150 or 40 by 150 something along those lines and there's you know several princesses and they're all different shapes so they're not all squares they're not all round so they're all different shapes and that's a lot of wall space and they they want to get the best quality for what they're what they're doing but i might be a little on the like okay i need them to be smaller kind of a side so they don't need to be pristine quality the way that you know diamond art club is known for so so that being said they offer their stuff in one size and um, for me not one one size does not fit all um, because I need them to be smaller in order to have the, the space to be able to display them and believe you me every diamond painting that I have purchased is going up on my wall unless it was a gift for somebody else um, there's not going to be a diamond painting that doesn't get displayed somewhere in my house and that being said eventually I'm going to have to get rich and move into a mansion that has 46,000 bedrooms so that I have enough places to put my diamond paintings and if I have to kick my husband out to do it I will <laughs> Maybe I maybe I can um, upgrade to a new husband that's like you know like a king or something and and you know has a, a palace that has plenty of wall space. What do you think, babe? I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> you don't sound flabbergasted. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, you're safe because Prince William and um, Prince Harry, or not Prince Harry anymore, but <laughs> Prince Harry are both taken.
Now what? You got any more questions for me? With the conversation we had the other day about seven diamond paintings for seven years. Oh, Lord Almighty. Here we I'm go. just wondering, you're saying about not knowing if you could finish 50, so... Uh, no, I know I can finish 50. When, I just don't know 70, that I can finish 50 when I'm 77. Right. So, so that being said... Backstory! Yes. So my husband says that our lucky number seven anniversary is next year. And for that, he says... I said... I said... Well, then, since we're doing lucky number seven, how many diamond paintings do I get? And he laughs and says, what? You get seven. And then... He uh, said, I get seven. And I said, what? And I started to say something, and then he said... After 17 years of marriage, then you get 17. And then 27, 37, and so on. So seven, seven is my husband's favorite number. Um... 17 is my favorite number. So, um, so he said that I get, after each seven in our anniversary, I get that amount in diamond paintings. However, when I'm 77, he wants to buy me how many? 57? Well, so, let's see, we're, we're, can I say how old we are now? <laughs> no, you may okay, not say how married, old we, we are, but it ends in a seven. Right, well, so next year we'll be married for seven years. So, uh, in order for you to have... I'm 57 would be married for 50 more years. So, then that was when you would get 57 diamond paintings. You were married for 57 years. Which, by then... We'll be ill years old. We'll be in our 80s, huh? Yes. Why do I keep saying 77? Oh, is that... I would probably like to get you a diamond painting when you're 77, because that's a big... You know, so I told my husband, 70. can we go the opposite way so I can get the 77 paintings now, or the 57 paintings now? <laughs> and then, you know, as I get older and I can't see anymore, then, you know, he can get me the, the uh, smaller amount, like only seven. Because I told him, you know, eventually I may go blind and then I have to have him, I'll have to have him sit on my lap <laughs> and basically hold my hand as if he's teaching me how to write and he's going to have to help me diamond paint. <laughs> And yes, I will make sure they are straight. <laughs> Even if I can't see, I can still feel. And I can feel if they're crooked. So. My husband is um, different. <laughs> he wants to live to be 100 years old. Now, if I live to be 100 years old, I better be able to drive and read and write and see and have all of my functions going and, like, all the good things that life has to hold. I, I do not want to be a bedridden 100-year-old person. So, my husband wants to live to be 100. That's his goal in life. I'd settle for 97. Or 92. Did both of your grandparents um, live to 97? Yes. My... Your paternal grandparents. Yes. Both My... of his paternal grandparents lived to be 97. So... He has high hopes to be at least 100. But I told him there's no way I'm living that long. So... So, that being said, he is trying to make me live by trying to tell me he's going to give me 57 diamond paintings when I'm in my 80s. I'm like, are you out your mind? <laughs> well, I mean, if you don't finish them, then uh, the grandkids or kids can. 
by that time, they'll probably have some flying cars or something crazy. I mean, they, they are supposed to have a prototype of a flying car I now, be so but... Sure they were talking about flying cars and back to the I just told you they the have 80s. a prototype of a flying car, really? so it is, it is wow. probably on the horizon. Mm. Now, I... Uh, they'll probably settle for at least self-driving cars that don't crash, but... I think that creates a whole nother infrastructure about how you're going to uh, have lanes and traffic and things like that in the sky. Right. I've already got planes and helicopters mm -hmm. and other aircraft that do that commercially. You know, we don't need to talk about that on this channel. You um, want to? You want to start a Back to the Future channel? Go for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> However. I never did get a, a full answer of whether or not we could we could um, you know do that in reverse. But. I do understand you're wanting to do it in reverse, but that would mean that you knew that you were gonna make it to you know fifty seven that you're gonna be on the earth long enough for us to be married for fifty seven years. No. I'm not. <laughs> it's really interesting to me the order of the colors that they have because you've gotten so much of this rose done, but there's like this spot here and these spots those here. Those are I'm supposed like, to why be done those? already. No, I was going to say, like, <laughs> Mr. why are those Captain not Obvious. done yet? <laughs> Captain Obvious, go ahead and point out my flaws of when I was placing diamonds and I was, like, basically drill blind to the number one. So when I was buying diamond paintings, did you think that you were going to ever want to um, do them yourself? No. I had my puzzles, you had your diamond paintings, and that was that. Because when I did pitch the idea, I did pitch the idea that we would work on it together, but then we had already started our puzzle project thing, and so he decided he wanted to continue with the puzzles, and I wanted to continue with diamond painting. And I would tell him, all oh, these people buy all these diamond paintings all the time. And I just, like, told him, I don't understand why. And then all of a sudden, I caught the bug. <laughs> I caught the bug and had to buy those 36 diamond paintings. And he's like, have you lost your mind? No, 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 no. I'm just addicted. <laughs> I feel like I should be in a meeting going, you know, like, my name is Misty and I'm an addict. <laughs> I... I don't, I don't do much else for, in, in the way of hobbies. So, it was nice for me to find something that can help occupy some of my time. Would you say that the family photo is the diamond painting that had the most colors out of any diamond painting? I don't think so. I don't remember how many colors the di the diamond painting had for the family portrait, but I want to say that it was actually less than some of the ones that I got from Huiken, who, like the 60 by 60s, those ones have 50 colors on them. Um, I think 50 is the most colors I've ever um, dealt with in one painting. So the 70. So this, yeah, so the castle one's going to be the, the one that has the most. 
And honestly, if they could have gotten away with selling it to me with, you know, an, an average amount of colors, they would have. Hmm. But since I wanted more detail, I needed the extra colors. So that actually helped. Oops. What would you say is the hardest thing about diamond painting? The hardest thing about diamond painting? Mm. Well, apart from the just um, stick to itness, you know, it's like. Get her done. Yeah, you just gotta <laughs> keep doing it, just having it go on there. Um, I think, I mean, it's a pretty simple process because it's a pre repeated motion over and over again. But it can get easy to not really, for one, pay attention to the colors. You can get just like, just, it, it, especially if you're not doing it by color, you know, you could just like, oh, you know get to a point where you put a wrong color on the wrong symbol. Um, or then also making sure that it's straight. I think that that's probably the hardest part is just making sure that it's straight, that you're not just placing it. I mean, because it's a simple enough process to just place the diamond, but you also have to make sure that it's straight and that you're not just placing it all cockeyed. Although with the circle ones, you know, um, so simple. backstory, my husband has not ever done anything but squares. He's not, um, you haven't, you haven't worked no, in any of my rounds, right? No, no rounds. Um, have you ever tried to even place one? Mm -mm. Well, I'm not letting you now either because you'll try to take credit for completing <laughs> the diamond one painting. Diamond yes, you're like, I helped. You I, didn't, uh, I helped. You didn't I, I put yourself. one diamond in there. I, you didn't do that by yourself. <laughs> I'm very competitive because on my Instagram I have um, placed all of my completed diamonds paintings in the on my profile and my husband I placed one and I told him how many I completed for the year last year and he said hey 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 Wait a minute. I, I did that one. You can't count it. And I said, fine. Um, then I did this many and you did this many. And, you know, like he, he did one, one for my 14 of them or whatever it was. Um, so I keep track of how many, how many diamond paintings I've done. Um... How many diamond paintings I've done. Sorry, I lost track. My son, I love when my son belly laughs. He's so cute. <laughs> uh. Bye guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more diamond painting content.